Last year, I promised myself I wouldn't do this again, and one year later, look where we are. But heyo guys, my name is Beta Ada Delota, and today we'll be talking about the furry fandom, specifically the nine levels of being a furry, because we needed another one of these. So yes, we technically already did this video two years ago, but I realized two major things about a month ago when I was thinking about doing a final follow-up video. One, my life has drastically improved in the span of two years, especially with regards to my opinion on the furry fandom and how much it means to me now. And two, I actually screwed up with counting the levels of hell in Dante's Inferno and applying it to the levels of being a furry. You see, you'd expect the engineer in the room to be the best at counting. But yes, I know in the original video we completely ignored two levels since there's nine total instead of seven and we could have just let the issue die off, but I kind of wanted to completely redo the levels of being a furry concept to take on a different meaning. So instead of being cynical, edgy, and self-deprecating with regards to furries, I want the video to take on a more realistic and applicable approach. I want it to better reflect how I feel about the fandom now and all that I've learned about it instead of having the knowledge of an outsider. That's why the new nine levels of being a furry will be more relative to how furry someone is or how involved in the furry fandom they are from an actual furry standpoint. Instead of looking at it from an uninformed view, I want to look at it from the view of, yeah, I've been in the fandom for a year or so and it's pretty good. Did I just repeat myself? But regardless of that, one idea I will always keep in mind with regards to this type of video is that in any of the circles of hell, there's no way out. And the only way to go is down. Starting at level zero, Furgatory. Oh, what am I doing? We already talked about that. So that level exists for reasons. And I guess level negative one or anything less than that means the individual is not even remotely interested in furries. So just normal. Okay, but the official start, level one, the information phase. This level is comprised of individuals who know of the furry fandom, mainly those who have a friend, family member, coworker, or acquaintance who is a furry or something close to it. These individuals only know small facts about furries while also being generally unfamiliar with the fandom overall. They may be supportive of their friend's interests or they might be against it. Either way, knowing about furries or it having some involvement in your life puts you at the first level. I guess you could call this the exposure phase, as the fandom is making its way to them rather than the individual going towards the fandom. Thus, some odd wording, but it works out somehow. Level 2. The Bystander Phase. This level is simply where an individual occasionally partakes in the furry fandom for their friend or family member. These individuals aren't necessarily invested in the fandom, but they go to fur meets, furry conventions, or other activities to support their friend or family member who is a furry. This kind of applies to really close friends, brothers or sisters, and mainly parents who want to help their friend or child not feel so socially anxious when in the furry fandom environment. This level could even apply to those who find the furry fandom to be interesting and unique rather than something they would partake in. Some Something like, oh it's cool, I just don't do it. Which honestly, those individuals who support their acquaintance or family member who is in the fandom, you are awesome. We need more people like you in this world. But on to level 3, the interest phase. This is where instead of the fandom coming to the individual, incentivizing and welcoming them, they finally take the initiative and peek their head through the door to see what's going on. They see everyone having fun, roaming around in fursuit, and the genuine interest has commenced. The individual from there considers their options for being in the fandom. Of course there's some hesitation with joining, they're weighing the pros and cons depending on their current situation but the individual is genuinely considering it and reflecting on their experiences in the fandom thus far. And it only really takes a minor interest to take that giant leap down the rabbit hole. I mean, look at my case. And from that, we move on to level 4. More specifically, level 4.5. The involvement phase. This level is where an individual is officially interested in the furry fandom. Hence the name of this level originally being the threshold phase. It's where your curiosity and involvement would allow others to believe you're in the fandom or have some interest in it. Of course, depending on how open you are about it. One thing to note about this level is that it's very finicky with what it might entail or more specifically what individuals in this phase might be exactly interested in with regards to the fandom. And even though there are in-between levels such as level 3.5 and 4.5 that allow variety in where people might be in the fandom, I'll let you guys figure out what the interest phase really is. But since we've gone over the introductory phases and we're getting more into the levels of involvement and dedication to the fandom, we'll be seeing a bit of repeat from our old favorite video and the levels entailing how much of a furry you might be from that. Of course with not as cynical of an approach. So level 5, the creativity phase. This level focuses on getting the idea and creative juices flowing, and figuring out who you want to be in the fandom art-wise. With this level also being known as the art phase, it's where one of two things may happen. One, you're in the process of creating your persona through ref sheets and design concepts. Or two, you already have a persona and you're getting art pieces made of them. But with regards to art at this level, you might be at the point where you pick up a hobby in the furry fandom. The most noticeable and common one in the fandom is drawing, but maybe drawing isn't your thing, but writing? dancing, or acting is. Whatever you may like, you have something that drives your interest in the fandom and keeps that interest or passion going that isn't solely the fluffy abominations of our imagination. Well, passion is a strong word, and you might only be infatuated with giant talking animal creatures, but we'll be getting more into that. Level 6, The Blushy Phase. This is the level in the furry fandom where it makes it into your life physically. 
Ooh. This is the phase where you get more physical art of your Sona, such as stickers, some prints, maybe a painting, and a t-shirt. Because I don't have a problem. Nope. Don't have a problem. I still don't have a- ah! Look, I don't have a problem. You can never have too many t-shirts of your Sona. This is also the stage where you might become a bit more open about being a furry and just having it as a side hobby. Oh, whoa, who's this? Yes, this is Bank of Potato calling in regard to your credit card bill. Oh, whoa. And as you can see, I've got lots of stormy badges and thingies. There's even more, but I have to dig it out of my closet, and my closet is a disaster. But seriously, it's like once you start getting art of your Sona, it turns into an addiction. Just a forewarning if you get a Sona, because now I'm going to get badges made for my newest Sona, Orenji. <clears throat> Level 7. The social phase. This is where we become more open and explorative with regards to the furry fandom. And no, not that kind of explorative, but more along the lines of getting to know other furries and finding a friend group that you can call your own. Okay, at this point, if you haven't done so before this, you officially have a telegram and maybe some sticker packs installed. From this, you probably joined a few group chats for furries local in your area, and you have a couple of individual furry acquaintances that you can chat with from time to time. You may have gone to a local fur meet or fur bowl here and there, but you're still trying to find the right group of friends or set of groups that you fit into. At this point, you've acknowledged that you want to get a fursuit of your character and you're figuring out what personality or emotions you want them to embody when you do get your suit. As an added bonus, you probably have pictures of your Sona on your desktop, your phone background, and maybe a Majira pop socket. So you're overall getting there. Welcome to level eight, the more social phase. In this level, you're gonna go broke. Trust me. In this level, you're gonna run into a few problems. Here's a few of those. Debating if it's really worth it to spend even more money on furry stuff. Yes, yes, this fur will do really nice for my new fursuit. Hey, how much for a fursuit? $9,000. That'll do. Oh yeah, don't forget about forming a language that's made entirely out of telegram stickers. Having lots of friends, but not being near any of them. Pineapple, I miss you. I miss you too. When am I going to see you again? I don't know, like a con six months from now. What con is that going to be? I don't even know. Ugh. Six months is so long I though. I spent all my money on like a fursuit. Now I can't go to any cons. I don't have any local furries around. I miss you so much. I miss you, you too, Pineapple. Oh. Getting your own fursuit, whether it be making it or buying it. But make sure you brush it, or else you'll get called out on Twitter. Eventually, you'll decide, I'm just gonna spend all of my money and move to a new city where there's actually furries. Oh, hey, new furry local. Hi. Hi. I just moved in. Oh, welcome. And finally, we have level nine, the completion phase. This is the point where the fandom for you has become one of your biggest passions or hobbies. You've potentially found a group of friends you feel comfortable around. Instead of going to a few fur meets or the occasional con here and there, you try to go to bigger conventions with your friends while also trying to meet new ones as well. You'll also have the occasional weekend where you meet up and have a party. You have a persona who you can call your very own, either as an extension of your personality or an entirely different personality you want to emote. And you're probably at the point where you know you're going to have a fursuit, whether it's in the process of being made, you know who the maker is and have everything planned, or you might already have it. Along with that, your sub-hobby in the fandom has grown and maybe you contribute some level of positivity back to the fandom through it. Heck, maybe you turn your sub-hobby in the fandom into a career like fursuit making, freelance artistry, or content creation like me. But ultimately, you're truly happy with the decision of becoming a furry. You're fully invested and you're here to stay if you can help it. But overall, everything in this level is a mix of all the good aspects of the previous levels, so do with the completion phase as you will. But regardless, that about does it for the 9 levels of being a furry. And on that note, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. I've put nearly 10 plus hours into the scripting process of this video alone, so any feedback on how I did is greatly appreciated. One small note I do want to add is that the details for each of these levels isn't exactly what that level of being a furry entails. So if you wanted a fursuit, but you're more at level 6 or 7, then that works as well. Overall, take what I say lightly. Nothing is fact for fact when it comes to a video like this. But like I've said in the last two installments, let me know in the comments below what level of furry you guys are and why. Of course, with the tone of video changing compared to the last one, your level of being a 
Furry probably changed as well. I'd also like to give a very big thank you to Zillion, Stormy Fulf, Pineapple Fox, and Majira for helping me out with this video. All their links will be below if you want to go and check them out, but you probably know about them already. The only other big announcement I have left is that it's summertime, for me at least. So you know that I'm going to be producing a ton of content for you guys. I've had all these amazing informational videos lined up just for this summer, and I'm really looking forward to showing them. But regardless, here's to getting my fursuit sometime this summer and hitting 100,000 subscribers before September. Besides that, I've got nothing else. Have a good day, guys. And as always, stay life, Jacket. Take care.